my dream is to bring my Mexican family and my Bulgarian family together. So if I can do that by building beautiful places, beautiful homes, then that's what I'll do with my spare time. And of course, eventually we're going to have a family together. We're going to have little Mexican Bulgarian babies <laughs> running around. Very curious what they're <clears> going to look like. You know, uh, hopping on stage with us. Yeah. Um, and helping with the Shpokovka and the Mazilka, <laughs> you know. Здравейте в Матине! Август е септември, пее Миро, ние пък в Матине и твърдим, че април откриваме като февруари, не за друго, а защото днес ще си говорим за една много голяма и много красива любов, която не могат да я спрат никакви контролно-пропускателни пунктове и бариери. Става дума за любовта между мексиканския американец Ернесто Валенцуела и неговата очарователна съпруга, българката Алекс. И понеже ние двете с Алекс сме истински дами, сега суичваме на английски, за да може и Ернесто да се включи пълноправно в разговора. So, hey guys. Hello. It's really, Hi. really yeah. a pleasure and an honor to have you here. No, well, thank you so much for inviting me. I was pretty excited when uh, my wife had told me that you guys had reached out. Um, and inviting invited, us. Inviting us, like, both yeah. of us, over us. <laughs> um, for this interview. So, well, I actually, it was the 14th of February when I saw your geek uh, with mullets. And I was there with my husband and I told him, look at these guys. <laughs> I want them in, um, in my show. I really want them in my nice. show. Nice. Yeah. It was probably one of our favorite concerts so far, yeah. as well for the audience. Mine too, Many definitely. People were like, it was, was so intimate best. and so personal and yeah. so inspiring. Yeah. So thank you for that. You want to know a secret? Yeah. It was very underprepared. Really? How so? <laughs> like two rehearsals before the show. Oh, wow. And we were eight musicians, so. But we're all professionals, so. Exactly, that's a sign of a true professionalism. Yeah, so we just really, in this concert, felt each other uh, so musically and so intimately, and we just performed and we were even amazed ourselves of, of it. So you're just uh, reassuring us. Of yeah, from where I stood, yeah. you all had such an amazing vibe together on the stage. Amazing. Thank you. It was that mesmerizing, me. truly. Yeah. So let me take you back to the beginning. When, how and where did you two meet? All right, do you? I you love telling the story. You, yeah, you, you're the best better the chronologically than I am. Okay, so I was living in London. I mean, I've been li I was living in the UK seven years at that point. Um, But I was living in London at that point, and it was 2020, so full-on quarantine, pandemic, yeah. no going out. I was studying in uni university, and I had an ex-classmate who, during the pandemic, moved to Northern Ireland. Uh, she had some friends there, and she just wanted to be in nature instead of be enclosed in a small flat in London. That's way, uh, where, via musical connections, she met Ernesto, who was living in Northern Ireland at that point. He was uh, working for a small church, small branch. He was helping with the elderly there who were quite lonely during the pandem pandemic. And they had like a Zoom meeting every morning to kind of keep the community going. So yeah. my friend invited me there. And I was like, yeah, cool. I need a bit of a community. And that's where I saw this long haired beast. <laughs> I was like, he looks pretty good. And he sounds pretty good too. And he looks like a very decent man. I, I remember um, just seeing just similar faces every day on this Zoom meeting because everything was closed down and we couldn't leave. And I just remember seeing her friend on the Zoom and she was like, oh, I want to invite a friend over. And then here I see my soon-to-be Bulgarian wife <laughs> enter into the picture. And I fell in love instantly, but I not too instantly. Um, I was like, oh, she's pretty, but I don't want to talk to her. I'm not going to try Why? to start Why anything. Why didn't you want to talk to her? Because I was like, oh, man, oh, this is going to be cringe if I, you know, we're doing this group meeting and then I message her on Instagram. <laughs> But she actually ended up messaging me on Instagram. She, she reached out to me. Two weeks later, yeah. I was way too intrigued because I knew bits of his story, where he came from. And I was like, what is this young guy doing with an elderly group of people in Northern Ireland? And he was also a musician. So I was like, ah, I'm curious. I messaged him. Uh, on an Insta story or something that he was playing the guitar and that's how it started. And two months in, we already knew we wanted to marry each other. Two months in? Yeah. yeah. How is that even possible, guys? Man, it's... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of backstory. I mean, I'll, I'll share it like in, a, in the shortest amount of time I, I, I can. Um, like, obviously, you know, we both had like relationships like previously to us meeting. And for me, 
after my last relationship, I I had already known that I really wanted to get married because I didn't like have my family growing up as a kid. So I was like, I knew I wanted to get married and I wanted to get married young. Like I felt life was too long and too complicating to just do it by myself. So it was just like a matter of who and when. Yeah. And when I met Alex, it's almost like me, like my, my maturity and my view of marriage had uh, grown and it at aligned. the same time. They it literally aligned. aligned. So we met and I wasn't super naive just to like, just jump into anything, but I was almost positive this was the woman for me. That's because in the first two hours of our first conversation, oh, I man. laid it down to him. I was like, look, I'm not looking just for a little cute relationship online. Yeah. I was like, actually, my desire is to get married and I know what I'm getting myself into. So if we're going to date, I need to know if you have that intention as well. So we had a lot of clarity and transparency from the start, which kind of took away all the bullshit afterwards. Yeah. It was a very transparent kind of beginning yeah. of a relationship. And and we got married, what, six months later? No, nine. Nine months. Nine, nine months later. later we, well, came... we only had communication for such a long time, which, again, helped us really get to know each other in a real way rather than just have fun together but not know who we are as people. So. Yeah. yeah. So. Were you afraid? I'm asking you because it seems to me a lot of young people are really scared of the whole idea of marriage mm -hmm. and they keep postponing it and postponing it. And in your ideal world, how does the marriage look like? That's a good question. Can I start? Yeah, go ahead. I have an answer. Yeah. I think it really depends what you've seen as a young child. Um, even though in our case it's completely different, but I had a very stable family, and not just stable in the sense of they were together, but till this day, 20 years late, 28 years later, they love each other. They're in love. Uh, yeah, they're in love. They. I've seen the rough bits of relationships as well of marriage, but I see that the reward at the end with each year just gets bigger and bigger because. With short-term relationships where there's no permanent commitment, you cannot possibly receive what you get out of a very long-term, for-life kind of relationship. So I was exposed to the value and uh, beauty of what the institution or the uh, kind of the special specialness of marriage was. So I had a very positive view of that, a very realistic as well, because I knew it's not a fairy tale. It's not you find sure. this one person, you never want anyone else, you're not tempted or you're not curious. But I think I learned how to value mm. what's the more valuable thing rather than just the short term. So yeah, I got to a point of, in my life where I realized it for myself that actually I, I want to commit to that. And I was not afraid, mm. especially after I met him, it like, it felt, it didn't just feel right. I knew it was right because we communicated and yeah. we figured out who we are, yeah. what we believe and what we want. And like, uh, I mean, everybody knows, like, I, th I think it's a saying, like, broken, broken marriages produce broken children. Mm -hmm. And I was like the product of, you know, like two very broken people, like trying to make it, but they just didn't. Yeah. They hurt each other so much. And I just know so many others who, uh, children that are just troubled because like mother and father weren't there. So like, I knew that I wanted to change all the generational curses, not just for the sake of changing what my generations have looked like in the past, but I knew that like the design was to, to have commitment. And in this generation, we're just so scared to commit and mm -hmm. to like, in a sense, we're too scared to suffer. We're too scared to, to wow, do... Wow, you're so wise. Yeah, we're too scared to do what's good. And always the good thing and the right thing is not always the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that marriage is like this big, scary monster, but because like that's how culture has portrayed it for the longest time. Prison, horrible yeah. for the rest of your yeah. life. But Those chains on your neck. Yeah. It gets better. It keeps getting better. It, yeah, honestly, over time, it just gets even better and like just the intimacy between one man and one woman getting to know each other so intimately is worth way more than having multiple relationships and producing more broken people. So that's, I guess that's the view that I have towards it. And that's why I made the choice to, to commit. And I like giving this example when people ask me why I believe in marriage. Um, and I say this, like everything good in life takes time, commitment, effort. 
right? A good career that achieves a lot for the world and for yourself personally. It takes time, effort, and commitment. It's not easy. You don't just do it when you feel it. You don't give up when you don't feel like it or when you encounter difficulty. Yeah. But then people, when it comes to love, they're almost like, ah, oh, it just it needs to happen naturally. Like, if it's meant to be, it will be. The moment I feel uncomfortable or the moment that person disappoints me because they're human. Yeah, sure. You disappoint as well. They give up. And I think that's the kind of piece that needs to fit. That in everything else in life, mm. we want commitment. We want contract. You want a contract when you go to work. You want proof that someone is going to stay. Come through. Come through, yeah, yeah. on their mm -hmm. agreement. And that's why marriage as well, it gives us the boundaries to keep us in something that we actually want when we're too irrational and emotional to feel like we don't want it. But when there's an easy Freak. going out, you just leave something that actually could be really good if you just stick it out and learn how to communicate and learn how to sacrifice for something greater than just yourself. And one that interesting thing. Yeah. You love the topic. I'll, I'll leave for this segment of marriage. <clears throat> She's really good at talking. She's like the better part of like, sometimes like I have a lot on my mind <laughs> But uh, sometimes I'm too scared and too like meek, and she's like my second voice. And so we 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 are super well connected. But sometimes. he thinks more than I do. But he I thinks think, more before he speaks. Yes, I think a lot more before I speak. She just like. He's <laughs> <laughs> the fiery Bulgarian. Yes, yeah, we, fiery I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the wedding. Uh, I know Chris's parents were the best man and maid of honor. Yeah. How did it happen? Makarov's parents. Oh. Uh, Benny and Viktor Makarov, the Legends. most loveliest people I know. Well, it's not for clout, it's like. not from fame. They're literally my parents' best friends. I grew up with Chris and Yuli. Oh, as I children. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a family so, affair. <laughs> they're literally like my second pair of parents. I've lived at their house probably as much as I've lived at mine, and vice versa with Chris. So it was natural. I mean, for me, they're not only like parents, they're spiritual kind of leaders and. Yeah. Incredible friends, I'd say now as an adult. Yeah, like uh, the marriage, uh, specifically, we got married in Elin Pelin. Elin Pelin. Elin Pelin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was such a beautiful. Why wedding. there? Pardon oh. the interruption. Bad, bad happenings around weddings. We had oh, a different yes. location in the mountain, in but like a month before our wedding, they canceled. Oh. So we had to last minute find a venue yeah. and our catering people who are also a family affair. Yeah. Uh, they had worked at Elin Pelin because not the Gradina before. So they were available and were like, we're doing it there. It looks pretty nice. Yeah. It's yeah. better than stressing out. No, I loved it. it and was it was really nice cool. to have some of my Mexican family come mm. to Bulgaria. Like none of them had been to Europe before. None of them had met me in and real none life. None of them had met her in real life. So the whole time, like the marriage was happening, I was like, I'm in Bulgaria, <laughs> my super Mexican family's here. And well, they're just meeting my wife. Real, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. just meeting my wife. No, so. The first two days before the wedding felt like... It just went by so fast. We didn't know what was yeah. happening. It was just love, excitement, the realization was, that this is actually it happening. It was very much just a journey. Like We didn't know what was going to happen, where we were going to go, where we were going to work. We were just like, we want to do this. Yeah. And, it made it, and it made it fun. I mean, there was like... Many times where, yeah, we were scary, but we had so much confidence that things would work out. So, and because we still. Because of commitment. Because of commitment, yeah. But also, like, the people that are around us are just insane. You Wait, know? Which is the moment I want to big up the catering that did our wedding. It's rest. my friends. Their name is Rest Catering. Gonna, Shout oh, out you, to them. You yes. rest, we do the rest. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and, yeah, the wedding was a lot of fun. It really does go like that yeah. and yeah. you wish you could do it all over again so 10 years in the game we'll do one yes i want to i want to remarry her in 10 years just to experience <laughs> uh. all over again <laughs> and my dress was made by my best friend from childhood oh great which was yeah. really awesome very special so i guess looking back it was magical and it still is we need to magical. let the interviewers speak yeah. we sorry Oh, no. I, I love it when you two are speaking it's far more interesting why did you decide to stay in bulgaria uh, and not in Northern Ireland or this. in Mexico? Yeah, so we'll do the quick thing. I had like, I had moved to Northern Ireland at 19 years old and I was there for almost three years. And we had the intention to uh, stay in the UK if it was possible, but they, I had actually got my visa rejected for my extension to live there for like another three years, which was going to be a big commitment. And that's like two months like uh, before I heard that, I had met Alex 
and we knew we wanted to get married and I was like, well, let's go to America. Um, Turns out you need proof of relationship for like, for like two, two years. years and I was like, we don't have that. To get married there. Yeah. And then the UK was really complicated. If he wanted to come on a visa as a partner to me, it was like, you need to have 60,000 pounds in savings. And and nobody so, has 60,000 yeah. pounds, so... Why? It, it wasn't, Why should marriage be so complicated? Yeah. And it wasn't that Bulgaria was our only and last option, but in a sense it was, but it was almost like it was God's plan to happen that way. And we were like, it would be good. Let me no, speak. go, 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 go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, it was almost really good as well because I needed to know where my wife was from, you know, like, like that's a big part of having like a interracial marriage is that you come from two complete different backgrounds yeah. and it'd be nice to come and like really get to know her uh, and come to Bulgaria. But little did, did we both know that Bulgaria was like the right place to be for both of us, um, especially like, you know, meeting Molets and me continuing my, my, my dream and my pursuit for music, yeah. which is crazy. Is it true you're preparing an album? Yes, oh, right now. So exciting. Um, we are working every single day, um, just creating like beat after beat. We are making all kinds of music and we're super excited for Bulgaria to experience another side of Molets and everything that we are as a team. Uh, so, I'm going to shout out uh, uh, Kamen, uh, Benji Gregory, he is an amazing... Same person. Yeah. Yeah, same person, different name, he's an amazing producer and him and I are producing as well as uh, uh, Robi Nikolov, uh, we're all working together and Chris and Yuli are just writing a bunch of lyrics <laughs> and we're just, we're having such an amazing time and it's going to be such a turn because we have a really big tour this summer around all of Bulgaria, of course, but it's going to be special because it's not only just the, the, the rap and the trap, but the jazz and the rock Great. and the contemporary uh, being mixed all into one. So um, I'm blown away by the sounds that we've created already. Um, and I'm ready for another Molets wave. Yeah. <laughs> Bulgaria. Is your beautiful wife going to take part with her piano? Yeah, You know, we sure. really need her in a lot of <laughs> different aspects in the, in, in the producing. Sometimes we're creating something and we're like, man, we need Alex because she's an amazing pianist. Um, and she's partook in the big concert in December 8th mm. and the two That's concerts that we've, the live concerts that we've had. Um, I'm hearing rumors that the album is going to be presented acoustically oh, for the first time. Can't wait. So yeah. That's definitely going to be a start yeah. to the season. And it's exciting because uh, Drugo, I've, I've, have you heard of yeah. Drugo? So, so I'll be one of Drugo's first artists. Um, Great, so, congratulations. So yeah, so we're working on getting my music out for the first time um, to the Bulgarian listeners and everybody else around the world that it's going to have English and Spanish. Um, maybe some Bulgarian. Maybe some <laughs> Bulgarian mixed in because I'm learning the language, but maybe I'll leave Chris and Yuli to write the <laughs> verses. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's just everything right now is just pushing music out and just pressing just amazing music. So Do you have excited. a launch date that you're aiming to? So for Molet... Be careful or, not to disclose uh, anything <laughs> that you're not supposed to. Uh, I know summer? For, for, yeah, summertime. It's going to be summertime. Both uh, Molet's music and my music, it's going to be right before the summer. Uh, Can't wait. So around that time. Well, yeah. when we get closer to the time, I'll ask you to come all here again so that we can say a lot more. Uh, yes, I would love to discuss yeah. music. I would love so to. Good. Yeah. Where do you all find your inspiration creating music? Man, um, you go. a lot of, right, like right now, um, I mean, I'm 24 years old and I feel like I'm just barely beginning to process my life for the past 24 years. Or like in mainly like my life between like 10 and 18 years old, where I had like the hardest time of my life. And so I'm talking about those things. And one of my songs, actually, my first song that I'll release is um, about a friend of mine who just recently died because oh, uh, I grew up in a gang culture and he, you know, got shot dead. And um, I really just want to talk about what my reality used to be. Yeah. Um, 
And so that's what it, my music's going to mainly be about for the beginning is just processing everything. Um, so that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from right now. And he's been listening to a lot of Kanye, a yeah. lot of a little Kendrick baby. Lamar. <laughs> Kendrick. John Mayer is always okay. an amazing. No, I mean, like, he's absolutely my favorite. Yeah, John Mayer has been one of my, if not one of the biggest uh, influences, even though like I do like, you know, uh, rap trap beats and yeah. stuff like he's my biggest uh inspiration musically in the whole jazz world he got me hooked yes. first thing when we met he was like do you know john mayer i almost <laughs> I like, like if uh, you don't like john no. mayer i don't want to marry you <laughs> and i did not know him yeah and my first reaction wasn't like wow great um but then i gave him a chance and i actually do love him now yes for me with music uh i have a classical background i used to play piano classically since the age of four um, I really lost my love for it because it became more of a job and a competitive industry than yeah. something personal, which is, I think, the experience of many classical musicians or uh, dancers who train for the profession. So, honestly, Mulets is something that inspired me to come back. Because I, once I graduated a professional music school in England, I said, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I was really broken because I loved music, but I felt like, I couldn't do it for myself and I didn't want to do it. So after six years of not playing, um, I moved back here. I'm inspired by what, by what these childhood friends of mine all of a sudden are doing. Yeah. I did not expect it, no one expected it. And this honestly gave me hope for coming back to Bulgaria, um, as well as Chris Zaharev, who is just, we know him, he's a culture changer. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I was like, there's great people here who are doing creative things right now that I really believe in and I think I can have a future here. So for me, that was a huge push. And then when I came here, and I've heard almost every demo of each song, and I would cry at every song. So for I remember me, this. yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they are uh, right now my biggest inspiration, apart from everything else I listen to. Yeah, I have to say, like the I the, need to the, <laughs> the music scene right now, which is like we're all friends. I mean, we've got Krisahari, Flamenkov the directors and creators behind everything yeah. visually you have Chris and you have got uh, Robbie and Kamen and um, this whole team which I, I view because I'm still getting to know the Bulgarian music scene and even other people like Mila Roberts and even like the Sauce mm -hmm. Kids gang with Virgo and stuff I really love the Bulgarian music scene and it actually encourages me a lot because um, I, I know that the culture is changing in mm -hmm. Bulgaria and it's starting with the art um, and that's something that I was like, I'm so happy I get to be part of this. Like, not only just, you know, enjoy it, but it's it's actually doing something. Mm. Um, we it's just not released, a selfish thing. We just <laughs> released, and it's going to come out the Molets movie. How do you say it? What's the name of it? Nechauti Kraya. Yes. <laughs> um, there was this young kid, I mean, he was probably like 12 years old, and he shared that's something. That's at the movie premiere. Yeah, at the movie premiere, yeah. He had shared is like emotion about like the music and just everything that's been happening and it made us cry. What did he tell you? He doesn't remember. You, I remember. I remember. <laughs> but you, maybe you can, you can say it a lot you better. Remember oh, yeah, better. He, she remembers he said it, it better. <laughs> no, he was just, he was shaking and he was so emotional. He was like, you know, your guys' music really gives hope to everyone. He was like, everyone is going through their own set of problems and pain. I'm like, this is a 12 year old kid speaking. It's like everyone has their own unique pain and experience, but your music and what you're doing is giving hope. And you literally started crying, yeah. but Yuli cries all the time. <laughs> but I almost cried it's as emotional. well. emotional. Yeah, it was very emotional and very beautiful. So for me, also, this is probably the thing that draws me the most, apart from the musical element. It's the fact yeah. that we're doing something of value here. And that's all, that's all that matters. Really. Well, you're touching souls. That's what art does to people. Yeah, that's why I'm invested in this industry. Amazing. What do you do when you don't do music? Oh. You do very, no, you do some. Oh, <laughs> well, I do some. <laughs> no, I have a full-time job. I do job, a lot. Um, at a non-profit organization. It's an international one. It's called A21, which stands for Abolishing Slavery in the 21st Century. Uh, I can't speak. Abolishing Slavery in the 21st Century. Yeah. Uh, essentially, we are putting up a stance against human trafficking globally because it's still a huge pro problem. Many people think that there's no slavery anymore. Actually, right now, there are more slaves than ever in human history. Our statistics show more than 50 million people are currently trafficked for um, sex, 
for their labor, for their organs, uh, babies oh, being trafficked. You got trafficked. me shivers, that's really yeah. devastating. And Bulgaria is number five in Europe. <sighs> in export of people yeah. to be sold. So there's a lot of work that we're doing here. I've only been with A21 for six months, but I love it. I'm kind of like the campaign organizer, educator, essentially prevention, because prevention is the best medicine. Of course. The more people we can stop from falling into the trap of human trafficking, um, the greater the chances at reducing the crime. So this is my full-time job, and I love a shout out to A21 and the team. Mm -hmm. So me. Apart from music, um, I've been building like my whole entire life. Like ever since I was a kid, I wanted to pick up a hammer and nails. I wanted to dig holes, <laughs> and like my holes. my art, like right now, like uh, I'm renovating our apartment, and I've been renovating. Oh, it by too. yourself? Yes. Wow. And with wow, the, the help bit, of two friends, of yeah, um, and me too. Mainly my my two friends, uh, Chris and Joshua and um, Steven, three great friends of mine who have helped me. But like um, I put so much thought and effort into uh, putting a Mexican style into a Bulgarian apartment. Yeah. And not uh, an easy job. Yeah. And I actually renovated a pretty big house in Bali East Good next to Samokov. That was my first great. Uh, big project. But um, it's my artwork. I put so much uh, care and detail into into building beauty because I mean we whenever them. yes we'll invite I you to will do an in, interview in the house when <laughs> I'm telling you it's gonna be one of the coolest apartments in Sofia <laughs> of RC when it's done you guys gotta do an interview there oh the I will remember cool. this I'll I'll remember it's, it's the I have it on tape yes everything's being built by no, no, seriously. natural materials open doors yeah. we can thank do you events. so thank simply you. I'm a maestro outside of yeah. music he celebrates every Friday on Maestro Day. Maestro's Day. Maestro's <laughs> With a beer. Shumensku <laughs> Bombička favorite. <laughs> Big it up better it's, than it's all funny. Mexican beers. My, uh, my, my friend uh, Bujio, it was at Ignatov or Ignatov? Ignatov. Ignatov. He was the first one to hire me and the first person I had a job with when I came to Bulgaria. He's like, you know, to be a real Maestro, you need uh, Banička and Buza. <laughs> I don't think you love the buza. Priceless mm, advice. Okay. Priceless <laughs> advice. So yeah, I, I don't do it just to make ends meet, even though it's been a source of income, but I, I enjoy it so much. So yeah. where and how do you see your future? On the Here. stage, building houses? Actually, you have it right on point. For me, like I've I've it's taken me some time to dial down my greatest desires and music for sure like is going to be my main focus and where I put most of my, my, my creative energy. And I do hope, you know, I do see myself uh, being an international artist. Um, and I can confidently say that it will happen whenever it does happen. And yeah. I'm just chipping away at the, at the sculpture. Yeah. And putting them 10,000 hours in. Putting the 10,000 hours in. And whatever like, happens with that, no matter what, like, I will continue to build for my family. Um, and I, my, my dream is to bring my Mexican family and my Bulgarian family together. So if I can do that by building beautiful places, beautiful homes, then that's what I'll do with my spare time. And of course, eventually we're going to have a family together. We're going to have little Mexican Bulgarian babies <laughs> running around. Very curious what they're <clears> going to look like. You know, uh, hopping on stage with us. Yeah. Um, and helping with the Shpokovka and the Mazilka, you know. <laughs> Um, so that's that's where I think our, our, our well, my dream for sure. I'm sure it's our dream yeah. um, where we're headed. What about you? Well, I definitely see myself with A21 for a long time because there's a shortage of people who want to do the real work uh, for human lives. So, uh, But I do want to develop myself creatively too. So I see a, a little path for me too with music and who knows what else. We'll write eventually together. Yeah, we're going to write and perform together, hopefully. Uh, and I am considering a podcast. Yeah. It's a very nice <laughs> podcast uh, idea. Are you looking for platforms, studios, <laughs> cameras? <laughs> yeah. Not yet. I haven't been brave enough to push the thought process to there. You can explain there. the idea behind it. But if I say it, then I kind of have to do it. <laughs> well, there you True go. It's, it's on camera. <laughs> but when you decide, give me a call. I will.
Thank you guys. Yeah, no, thank I you so much. I have to say this one was my one of my absolute favorite talks in the show and you two are quite the inspiration oh. and you really made my day. So thank oh. you. Thanks a lot. Thank yeah. you so much and I can't wait for the next one. Me too. It will be to in your apartment. Yeah, yeah. This is my yeah. first oh. Bulgarian interview. <laughs> really? Sponsor yes. us and then it can be in the apartments. You here. got it. You got yeah. it. We're going to get the apartment rolling yeah. with a bit of funding. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you all the best of luck, you all the too. amazing stages and all the fulfilled dreams. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And you as well. Thanks. We send the love right back to you. Thank you. <laughs>